This video will discuss sound and the unit of measurement for the intensity, or sorry, the loudness of sound, the decibel unit. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about Doppler effect. So, question for you. If a tree falls in a forest, does it produce sound? Does it make a sound? To a physicist, yes. Because as the tree hit the ground, it uh, pushed aside air, and uh, that air pressure variation went out from where the tree was. That's sound. And other, other uh, individuals may say that it takes someone there to hear the sound. But you know, as a physicist, we would say a tree falling in the forest with no one around does create sound. Um, so I'm going to investigate sound and some of its properties in this uh, video. Sound waves carry energy. Here is a, uh, a photograph of a glass that's just been broken as a sound wave from a, a loudspeaker uh, placed near this uh, crystal. Uh, the sound that was coming out of the loudspeaker had a frequency equal to a resonant fre to a natural frequency of vibration for the glass. So there was a resonance uh, set up, and the sound waves delivering energy at the proper time to match the uh, oscillations in the crystal uh, build up the amplitude of those oscillations in the crystal to the point where the glass was broken so here's a wire that is uh, or a string that's vibrating a guitar string or a piano string uh, we have the situation as the string moves it pushes air and it creates a compression a high pressure region where it's uh, pushing into the room air and as it pulls away from air on the left side it creates a little lower pressure situation and these will propagate outward from the string and the string can vibrate back and forth and create uh, high pressure and low pressure on both sides those pressure variations will by themselves move through the material uh, the molecules are going to uh, sort of communicate this high pressure or low pressure situation to their neighboring molecules and the wave uh, proceeds outward and for normal temperatures in the air that's about 340 meters per second for the speed of sound this is about a million times it's not exactly but it's about a million times slower than the speed of light so you can for thunderstorms you can count 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 and uh, if that's the time the thunder appears is sensed by your ear after you saw the lightning with your eyes the, the storm's about a mile away uh, 340 meters per second roughly it's uh, five seconds for a mile of travel so we have the uh, the wire back to the wire here moving back and forth and uh, creating these pressure variations we get a wave moving outward from this source our ears can detect these sound waves. Our eardrum has uh, pressure on both sides, but as the sound wave comes in, it's going to create first higher pressure, then lower pressure. If first the compression reaches the eardrum and later the rarefaction, uh, the low pressure part of the wave reaches the eardrum, the eardrum's going to be vibrating back and forth, and there's mechanisms inside to uh, change that pressure signal into a nerve signal and send that to the brain. So take anatomy and physiology of the ear to uh, learn those details. We're not going to just uh, as a physics situation. You should know that waves carry energy and can make this eardrum move. Uh, here's the situation with sort of how far away are the fireworks. If you see the fireworks and then five seconds later you hear the boom of the explosion of the uh, shell in the air, uh, then that fireworks is taking place about a mile from you. Uh, it's a straight line distance. So we have sound going out from this tuning fork. It has a certain wavelength. Wavelength, again, measured between two successive similar portions of the wave. So here from the high pressure to the next high pressure, uh, we have the wavelength. The wave has a speed moving outward. And there's a frequency of the, uh, the waves if you're just standing at one place. And if you could see sound waves, and you, if you could count very fast, you could count the number of peaks per second that go by your position. 
and that would be the frequency of the wave. For all waves, there's a relationship between the speed of the wave, the wavelength, and the frequency. The speed of the wave in meters per second is equal to the wavelength in meters times the frequency in hertz, and hertz have units of 1 over seconds. So suppose we have a frequency of 440 hertz, a sound wave. This is the note A in, uh, on the musical scale, 440 hertz, and it's a sort of mid-range uh, frequency, not too high, not too low. Suppose the, we are in a room with a temperature such that the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. Well, it's a direct calculation. The speed of sound, 340 meters per second, equals the wavelength times the frequency. You should check this on your own calculator. I came out with uh, 0.773 meters, so about 77 centimeters, uh, less than a meter. That would be the wavelength of uh, a typical sound wave. Of course, there are many variations to this. Uh, ultrasound, very high frequency, that's going to have a very short wavelength. And there are different uh, uh, properties in the way that sound interacts with uh, the human body, depending on the frequency. So, uh, worthy of study. But velocity equals wavelength times frequency. It's a... Uh, uh, situation that can be used to calculate the speed of sound um, given the wavelength and or measuring the wavelength and knowing the frequency uh, common activity um, let's go on to noise and loudness of sound so here we have a, a traffic jam in India in Delhi and uh, lots of motors running uh, maybe some radios blaring from uh, some of the vehicles and a lot of sound energy in the air that can uh, make it difficult to hear someone right beside you. So we have a measurement for the loudness of sound. It's the, called the decibel. And there's uh, rough numbers given in the OpenStax College Physics textbook, uh, Table 17.2, Chapter 17 material. If you're standing one meter away from someone who is whispering, just a gentle whisper. That would be about 20 decibels for the loudness. A normal conversation, about 60 decibels. If you're uh, going to a loud rock concert, and depends on how far away you are from the speakers, but in that situation you could be exposed to 120 decibels. That starts to be painful for good reason. Your ear is being damaged. So it's a good idea to wear earplugs to loud concerts. Uh, if uh, you do not uh, protect your hearing, you can have loss of hearing after uh, hours at a concert, or if your work environment is, uh, uh, is noisy and you don't have ear protection, maybe after days or months, um, the ear drum and the ear hearing mechanism needs to be protected. So go ahead and uh, wear ear protection, uh, kind of a headset on your on your ears uh, in those situations that uh, your business where you work should provide that if you're in a noisy environment. We can quantify this with a calculation. That's always good to do. Let mathematics be the language that uh, connects the intensity to the decibel number. So our calculation here, the decibel value, the dB, is equal to 10, so decibel, um, a factor of 10, multiplied on the log of the intensity of the wave divided by a standard intensity, a reference intensity. This is just the threshold of hearing for the average person. Um, this intensity, 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. That's not much, but uh, your ear is sensitive, and 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared will give you a sensation that there's sound around. You would not be able to hear words that were spoken if, if this is the intensity of the sound uh, coming into your ear, but uh, just start to get a hint that there's, there's sound present. You might ask yourself, why complicate our lives by having to put in a log function into this calculation? You know, why not just have you know, a linear function? You know, decibels equals 10 times intensity. Well, the ear is a logarithmic detector of sound energy. That is a good thing 
our ear has been designed to hear very loud sounds and very soft sounds and to accomplish that the ear uh, effectively in the way the ear works takes the logarithm of the intensity before sending that signal onto the brain so this is a good mathematical description of the way the ear actually works the ear is a logarithmic detector of energy you may or may not be aware but your eyes are also logarithmic detectors of energy that allows you to see at night and during the day and astronomers have a system of brightness of stars called the magnitude system and uh, the numerical numbers there are in a logarithmic relationship to the intensity of the light uh, but we're talking about sound so decibel so let's try some calculations uh, let's calculate the decibel number if we're told that the intensity of the sound is 0 0.0003 watts per meter squared. Well, it's a direct calculation. This is the I value. We're given the intensity, 0 0.0003 watts per meter squared. We always divide by 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. That's our reference intensity. So this formula for calculating decibels, I naught is always 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared on the decibel system. So we go ahead and put in our value for the intensity. We divide by 1 times 10 to the minus 12. We get 3 times 10 to the 8th inside the, uh, arg as the argument of the log function. Activate your calculator. Take log of 3 times 10 to the 8th. 3e8 possibly on your calculator. Um, you do need to use scientific notation in entering this number. That's, at least that's the most convenient. This would be 300 million if you want to enter it as uh, with lots of zeros. Uh, but 3 times 10 to the 8th would be the convenient way. Taking the log of that number is 8.477. Again, the logarithm compresses a range of numbers. So instead of having 300 million, we've got 8.477 after we take the logarithm. The decibel system uh, is a last step. We multiply by 10. So rounding off here, the decibels would be 84.8. We just move the decimal place one place because we're multiplying by 10. And I'm rounding, 84.8 is the decibel number. Let's uh, go at this a different way. Suppose we want to calculate the intensity when we uh, know that the decibel value of the sound is 82 decibels. So now we put in 82 on the left side equals 10 log. Now the unknown is I, and it's a, a little bit complicated because this I is under the control of the uh, uh, logarithmic function. So my first step here is to solve is to divide the uh, 82 by 10. You know, we get 8.2 on the left side. Now I need to somehow get rid of this log function. What I need to do is use the inverse function of log and the base is 10 here. When the base doesn't appear the log is base 10. So I need to make both sides here a power of 10. 10 to the 8.2, that's going to be on the left side. Here, it's going to be 10 raised to the power log of this uh, calculation. 10 to the log of this uh, expression here. The 10 to the power and the log base 10 are inverse functions, and their effects cancel. And there's, there's some situations where you have to be careful in doing this uh, process, but for this number, it's fine. Uh, so 10 to the power and log base 10, those functions cancel. And we're just left with i divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 12. Well, we want to try to find i, so we multiply both sides by 1 times 10 to the minus 12. We have the same base, so we can use the laws of exponents, and we can combine the uh, 8.2 and the minus 12. They're going to add, the minus 12 is a negative quantity, but they're going to add together. When we have the same base, we add the powers, add the exponents. So 8.2 minus 12, we end up with uh, minus 3.8 as the power of 10. And putting that into your calculator, let your calculator return to you the value when uh, you're calculating 10 to the x, and x is minus 3.8. And you find 1.58 times 10 to the minus 4 watts per meter squared. Is this a surprise? Is this a surprise? Our decibel value is 82. And I did this on purpose to have this result up here available. So decibel here of 84.8, here 82, that's a little lower decibel number. We should expect a lower intensity. Um, and did we achieve that? Well, 3 times 10 to the minus 4 was the uh, intensity in this first problem. 
Now 1.58 times 10 to the minus 4. And yes, we have a lower intensity. This answer makes sense. The lower decibel value has a smaller intensity value. So that's the operation of the decibel uh, calculation. The two typical problems are uh, given I, calculate the decibels, or given the decibels, calculate the I. So practice with those. Let's move on to Doppler effect. Doppler effect. The change in the frequency that we hear for the sound, the change in the tone that we hear. So here we have a parked car and two observers at rest. The horn is sounding. Both observers will hear, hear the same pitch, hear the same tone. They'll have the same frequency of sound arriving at their ears. But if we put things into motion, then we get a change. So this person is, I'm sure, standing on the sidewalk, and the car is on the roadway. But as the car is moving now, the horn is moving, each time a uh, compression comes out of the horn mechanism, a high pressure, the car is a little bit forward of where it was before. So the car is at position number one, clear back here, and the horn is sounding. We get a sound wave propagating out in a sphere from the uh, source of the sound. At uh, when uh, wave number two was emitted, the car was a little bit further to the right, wave number three, wave number four, and now wave number five is coming out of a circle that's uh, centered on the horn. But if you take a look here at the peaks of the wave, the compressions, where they're located, towards this observer, observer Y, the peaks are closer together and we're going to have a smaller wavelength. The peaks are closer together, the wavelength is smaller. That's going to lead to a higher frequency. There are going to be more peaks per second reach this person's ear than compared to when the car is at rest. And back here, this observer, so wave number one was emitted, the car was here. When wave number two is emitted, the car is to the right. So this wave number two has a disadvantage as far as reaching observer X. It's the car is moving off to the right, the wave, wave is coming back to the left here, and the starting point is a little further to the right for wave 3, 4, and 5. And what happens is now the wavelength is longer and the frequency is going to be lower. So the way the Doppler effect works, if uh, the source is approaching the observer, the frequency is going to be higher. If the source is moving away from the observer, the frequency is going to be lower. This works for sound. Also works for radar waves for the uh, the police force in uh, measuring the speed of automobiles. They have equipment that sends the radar wave, bounces off the car, comes back to the electronics, and the electronics uh, measure the frequency of the returning wave and calculate the speed of the car. Uh, the speed of the car affects the frequency of the radar waves that come back. Um, Different picture here. Suppose the observers are moving. The car's at rest and the observers are running. Uh, observer Y running towards the car. Observer X running away from the car. This observer is going to hear more uh, high pressure uh, you know, indications per second, a higher frequency. Going to hear a higher frequency. And the person over here is going to hear a lower frequency. So again, approach of the source and the uh, detector, we're going to get a higher frequency effect. And here, the uh, receiver moving away from the source, we're going to get a lower frequency. There are going to be fewer peaks per second across this eardrum. Uh, so it works for sound, also uses very useful in astronomy for light. And astronomers can determine the speeds of stars and planets and galaxies and spacecraft. Uh, by uh, taking measurements of the frequency of the light that is, uh, that is received. Um, so that's where we're going to end this particular video. Uh, sound is created by some disturbance pushing air from side to side. And uh, sound is present when a tree falls in the forest and no one's around. We have the speed of sound equal to the wavelength of the, of the sound wave times the frequency. Uh, v equals lambda times f. And we have a measurement of the loudness of the sound, the decibel scale, dB equals 10, log of the intensity of the sound divided by the reference intensity, which is 10 to the minus 12. And then the concept of the Doppler effect. If there's motion, um, radial motion, towards or away from the observer, then we'll get a shift in the frequency of, of the wave. Um, 
perhaps I should note, if this car is moving sideways, um, and our observer was at, at rest here, if the car was uh, coming out of your computer screen towards you, um, there would be no Doppler shift at the time when this car is right in between the two observers here. Uh, Doppler shift, we have to have some motion towards or away th from the observer. Motion sideways to the observer does not produce a, uh, a Doppler shift for this, this sound situation. So that's where we're going to leave it. Uh, keep reading and asking questions. Um, and look at the real world for Doppler shift examples.